This video is sponsored by Twinkies. Nah, I'm just kidding. Okay, so if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nathan, and I do a lot of uh, backing reviews. And of course, it's a sunny day out there. I decided to throw some Twinkies at my uh, vacuums. Let's see how well they do. We have the 675. We have the Yeti. Um, looks like the 675 is easily pushing through the Twinkies without any trouble. Let's see what the Yeti can do. Well, looks like the Yeti is having no issues powering through the Twinkies, but let's not focus on the 675 or the Twinkies. Get those out of the way. Today, in this video, we'll focus on the Yeti Max Roar Vacuum. And just a legal disclaimer, no Twinkies were harmed in the making of this video. They're all freshly packed in the wrappers. They're not damaged, maybe a little smushed, but you know what? They still taste wonderful, so let's go and have a quick Twinkie break. Alright, so there's actually three different versions of the Yeti Roar Vacuum. There's the Yeti Vac, the Yeti Vac Max, the one that we'll be looking in this video, and there's the Yeti Vac Station. Now, the main differences between the three models is battery life. Uh, the Yeti Vac versus the Yeti Vac Max has 110 minutes versus 200 minutes. Also, if you get the Yeti Vac Station, as the name implies, it includes the self-emptying bin out of the box. Now, all three models do have the capability of mopping, and also they are compatible with a self-emptying bin. Well, there's a saying, the scale doesn't lie. Yes, every morning I weigh myself, and unfortunately if I had one too many Twinkies, the scale will definitely let me know I've gained some weight. Alright, that's for another day. Okay, so let's go ahead and put down about 2 ounces of rice, and we'll see how well the Yeti Vax Max does. Hey. Alright, so I have to ask you guys a huge favor. So, if it's possible, can you guys give me a big old thumbs up so you can encourage this little guy? He's trying his best to pick up these two ounces of rice. And, of course, if the wife sees this giant mess, well, that would be the end of Royal Masters. These videos will be shut down. My Royal Backers will probably be given away or donated, and I'll be living in a doghouse for the rest of my life. I'm just kidding. But in reality, uh, these raw vacuums do a pretty good job, and the results of the Yeti Vax Max is actually pretty surprising. Now once the Yeti is done with the back and forth clean pound, it will just finish up the area doing a perimeter sweep. Now this raw vacuum does not have a dedicated wall sensor, but as you can see it does a pretty good job going along the edges, and it just has a single side brush. I kind of wish it had a dual side brushes on different models. Also, it's not speed sensitive, so just be mindful it may scatter some debris around. Now, a lot of these features cross different well, vacuums have a self recharging capabilities, and I did get a question the other day do they have the ability to go back if they can't finish the clean job? And for the short answer, yes. Now, it may vary depending on what model, but just from the various models I've tested on this channel, most of them do have this capability. So if you're looking at a row of vacuum with long battery life, they're really designed for a larger house, maybe 3,000 square feet. But I really think battery life is not a huge issue since they have the ability to go back, recharge, and then resume where they left off. Now, this is entirely dependent on the software. Some manufacturers may omit this feature, but for the majority of the manufacturers, like Yeti, they will include this feature. Okay, let's see how well the Yeti Vax Max does. Now, if you recall, the dry weight of the dustbin was 6.825 ounces, so an ideal perfect score would be 8.825 ounces with 2 ounces of material, but at 8.795, 98.5%, not too bad. Okay, let's see how well the well, vacuum navigates with various opticals. You can see it does a pretty good job with the bathroom scale, but for smaller objects like the teddy bear, the water bottles, it kind of pushes them out of the way. There's no optical avoiding sensors on this model.
Okay, so this is a little bit tougher challenge. We got shoe strings, we got power cables, we have a bunch of objects, and of course we have some more rice on the ground. Now, you can see that the Yeti did struggle with the shoe strings, and we also struggle with the power cable. So my recommendation to you is to try to pick up the area. Don't leave a lot of strings around, or shoe strings, or this will in fact will probably get stuck. Now, there is a uh, keep out zone in the application, so if you do have a dedicated area for shoes, well, you can actually block off that area within the app. Now, in terms of mapping, it's very similar to a lot of these raw vacuums. Now, keep in mind, this uses a camera-based system versus LiDAR, so it does take about one to three cleaning runs before it actually creates a map, and then from there, it will actually create its own rooms. Unfortunately, as a time of filming, it does not allow you to create your own rooms, but you have the ability to name the rooms. You can also do area select and keep out zones. Okay, so what do you guys think about the Yeti Vax Vax so far? Do you guys like it? Do you guys dislike it? Now, overall, I think this guy's doing a pretty good job. Uh, kind of reminds me of like an upside down Oreo, or if someone took the top of it and eats the yummy frosting. You got the cookie on the bottom, you got the yummy frosting on top, and later on, you eat the cookie top. Okay, so I did try to throw everything I could at the Yeti series, and it doesn't seem to stop these guys. Now, a few months back, I did review the Yeti Vac, which is the cheapest option. I believe it's on sale for about $217. So if you don't need the self-emptying bin, or if you don't need the mopping system, well, the Yeti Vac is a good option. It has the same Pascals, and the battery life is slightly shorter, around 110 minutes. Now, a lot of these raw vacuums have an application, and within that application, you create a map for your house. Now, once you've done creating a map, you can actually do a keep out zone. Now, the benefit of having a keep out zone is, for example, maybe you have a delicate instrument on the ground, or maybe you have water bowls, or in my case, a magical unicorn that does not like to get knocked over. Well, you could create an area over that, and the raw vacuum should be able to avoid it. So, just keep in mind that you do have to kind of play around with the keep out zones or the area select. It's not like entirely accurate. It may overlap. So my recommendation is make the area bigger over the objects you want to avoid in case the raw vacuum uh, hits the object. Okay, so let's look at the mopping system. Now on all three series, they're almost identical. Keep in mind that the Yeti VAC does not include a mopping system out of the box. You do have to buy that separately, but that's why it's a little bit cheaper than the other two models. Now, it does come with a washable mopping pad. It's fairly easy to clean, just throw in your wash and dryer when you're done, and you can let it air dry if you want. Now that great part is called the mopping plate. It has like some Velcro strips, which holds on the mopping pad. Now, the most asked question I get is, can you add chemicals to the water tank? My recommendations don't do it unless it's supplied by the manufacturer because some chemicals actually eat away the rubber hoses that's inside the tank and can ultimately ruin the mopping system. Now once you fill up the water tank I recommend using warm or cold water just slide back in. Now you may notice these two little pegs that's where it goes in these two holes there just flip the robot upside down and just press down and it should just snap in. The robot will also let you know that the mopping plate has been installed. Okay, so one thing I like about the Yeti series is it has a little carpet sensor. So when it's vacuuming, it actually boosts up the sensor. But when it's mopping, it will actually avoid carpet. You can see it does a pretty good job going along the edges of my carpet there without actually getting them wet. Now, a lot of these raw vacuums don't have that capability, which is surprising. But you can see it's really designed for light mopping tasks. You can pick up some light dust and debris, and there's still a fair amount of water left, so you can cover a large area. Now, this won't replace a traditional mopping. I do recommend doing that occasionally. Alright, so the last thing we're going to talk about is the application. Now, I am going to use the Yeti Vac Station for this demonstration, but basically the application is the same across all three models. As you can see, you can do an area select, and you can make the handle larger or smaller. You can do rectangles, you can do squares, and just cover that area. You may notice that white area over like a kind of a light blue background. That just kind of tells you where the raw vacuum cleaned or where it can reach. And that light blue area is where the raw vacuum can't reach. It may represent furniture or just an obstacle that the raw vacuum cannot get to. Now if you swipe up from the bottom, you can access all your core features like the vacuum levels. You can also do mopping levels, go into cleaning schedule, and you can change the volume of the robot. 
You do have the ability to uh, do scheduling where you can actually schedule out to a specific room or you can just do the entire area. Alright, so here's a look at some of the core features. You got Do Not Disturb, you can do Carpet Boost. You also have Auto Empty if you have a docking station. And lastly, you can do Cleaning Sequences, do specific rooms in order. Okay, let's talk about the self-emptying bin capabilities. Now, all three models do offer the option to add a self-emptying bin. Uh, they do not include it if you get the Yeti Vac Max or the Yeti Vac, but the price is a little bit cheaper and it's always a later option. You may have noticed that it has dual extractor ports and also the dust bins are fairly large around 480 milliliters. Static from like the EcoVac series. Also, there's a red bud that allows you to easily empty out the contents. Okay, let's go and give you my final thoughts on the Yeti Vax Max. Overall, it's a pretty nice roll of vacuum, but it's not for everyone. If you're looking for a lot of navigation, more app features, or a highly detailed map, I might recommend looking at a different product. Also, the Yeti Vax Max does not have multi-map saving. Also, it creates its rooms automatically. There's no way to do it manually. So just keep that in mind, but you can name your rooms. Now, you may notice these black little windows there. That's for the self-emptying option. Yes, all three series do have the option to add the self-emptying bin, and you can add the mopping system if you just get the Yeti back. All right, so thanks so much for watching. You guys have a great rest of the day. See you later. Bye-bye.